So you have a Korean parent. Maybe both of them are Korean, one is Korean. Maybe you are a Korean adoptee and you spend your whole life living outside of the motherland. And maybe you've thought about Korea your whole life. It's kind of been a faraway magical country uh, your entire childhood. And you've hit an age where you're wondering, what would it be like to live in South Korea? So how are we qualified to talk about this topic? Well, if you're joining us for the first time at The Happy Project, my name is Becky. Cedric Sky Seti. And both of us are mixed Korean. My dad's white American, mom's Korean. Dad is black American, mom's Korean. <laughs> Different moms, <laughs> not same mom. We are not related in any mm -hmm. form or shape. That would be weird. I lived in Seoul, South Korea, well, also in Suwon, uh, probably for a total of maybe 10 years maybe 11 even, right? If you count my schooling mm -hmm. and then the summers that I would spend there. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's quite a chunk of my life. <laughs> yeah, that's about what, a third? Don't give it away, no one needs to know my uh, age. Uh, uh, so I lived in Korea from 2018 to 2022. First year in Daejeon, which is also a fairly big city in Korea. And then the next three years was in Seoul. So you might have some expectations, right? What Korea is going to be like. And some of those expectations could have been defined by what you knew about Korea growing up, right? Maybe the dramas mm -hmm. that your mom watched or the language that your parents used in the household. Right, or um, even the types of food that you're used to eating in the yeah, household. Yeah, totally. Because right. definitely it's not that everyone is, is like depending on where your parents may have emigrated to around the world, the type of quote unquote Korean food could also have changed and mm -hmm. evolved, right? So you might be thinking this is Korean food because my parents and my parents' parents cooked it for us. But when you actually go to modern Korea today, you might find people aren't eating that anymore. Right. Or it looks a little bit different than what you expect. So what we wanted to talk about were some of the expectations you might be having before you go to Korea, uh, whether you're aware of it or not, and what to prepare for for when you actually do arrive there and start living there. This is a little bit different than a visit. The first one, and this is in no particular order, mm -hmm. but the first one will be, I will be able to go there and just assimilate the language and just be totally fluent. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so that is definitely what I thought. And so my level of Korean would, I, I would say by the time I got there for the first time was maybe beginner intermediate, probably lower intermediate level. Uh, I could read it, write it, mm -hmm. understand a great deal of it. But I thought that within a year, I'll be like native level fluent, mm -hmm. uh, which was not the case. For me, uh, I realized that Korea has uh, become a very English friendly country. Yeah. And so that was something that I sort of like easily fell into in terms of like my comfort. Uh, just relying on English more than I needed to. I mean, mm -hmm. there are certain countries that you can move to or visit and English is not really even a thing or yeah. whatever your native language is, it's, it's, not, it's not a thing in that country. So you have to, in order to survive, you have to either learn the language or at least learn the survival version of that language. Mm -hmm. In Korea, especially in the big cities, in Daejeon, in Seoul for me, <laughs> English everywhere, like yeah. the road signs, I mean, and even like most Koreans, can speak at least very little English or no English words. So uh, I just thought it'd be easy for me to, to learn Korean mm -hmm. and to, to become advanced. Um, that was yeah. not the case. I did study a lot my first year, but I think I did fall into the trap of getting too comfortable in the fact that English was sort of everywhere. So it's not just the fact that English is so prevalent in Korea, um, it's also the fact of how you might look right? Mm -hmm. So if you're mixed like us and maybe a native Korean sees you and they don't assume that you have any Korean background or understanding at all, yeah. the first gut instinct for them might just to be to speak to you in English. Right. And even if you respond in Korean, there can be a dissonance between what they're hearing and what they're seeing, right. what they're assuming. It's, it's such a strange thing. Yeah. So yeah. you might be like, oh yeah, I'm just speaking Korean because I'm, you know, I'm learning the language and people speak Korean here. Mm -hmm. And people will still go out of their way to speak perhaps in worse English than your Korean yeah. to you, right? Because of how you look. And it, I guess there's some sort of strange conditioning that's subconscious yeah. even to them. I don't think they even recognize they're doing it. And I think they're trying to be accommodating, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you can be like, I mean, I've seen you even, and she's advanced level fluency in Korean. Like I, I've seen you speak Korean to people and 
they'll just try to speak just English speak to you. English you back, know what yeah. I mean? So it's funny. So it is a challenge in that way, yeah, for sure. And so I think, uh, especially if you're mixed Korean and you might have grown up speaking Korean, when you go to Korea, you might be surprised how nobody speaks to you in Korean, <laughs> right? Yeah. Especially if you're in like city center, um, some people will go out of their way to speak English to you, even if English is not your first language. No. Right? Because maybe you're coming from France mm -hmm. and they'll just see you and assume, ah, you must speak English. So that might be something that could surprise you a little bit when you arrive. Something that goes hand in hand with language is culture. So you might also have thought, well, I grew up with Korean culture in my house. Mm -hmm. Maybe if both of your parents are ethnically Korean or immigrants from Korea, or you yourself, or you're a mixed Korean and one of your parents is Korean. And uh, so you might be thinking, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with Korean culture. I know a lot about it um, because it's just very natural to me. When you actually go to Korea, you could be surprised mm -hmm. at how rapidly the country has changed and evolved. And even the things that you are receiving, uh, I think as an import from Korea, is, yeah. is like, it's like behind. A little behind, yeah. What's happening actually in Korea. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, from like, uh, maybe entertainment or like maybe news, like if even you're used news. to getting like your news uh, or maybe like, I don't know, back in the day, we used to have like CDs that we would get from Korea. I mean, we're already like behind the trend. Mm -hmm. I mean, now with the internet, it is a little different, but maybe things like consumer electronics. We all know that now Korea is uh, very much leading in like a lot of home appliances, Samsung, LG, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think even those appliances in America are a little different yeah. and they're a little behind because when I went to Korea, I'm like, wow, they're, there's so much more and they're different yeah. and they're more advanced in Korea. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely true. And also, like, it's, if your parents, and this is very common with Korean Americans, if your parents immigrated to the U.S., let's say in the 70s or 80s, mm -hmm. even the language that they're using is now maybe disused in Korea. Like, people true. aren't speaking that anymore. Or just um, some, I don't know, like, even manners, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, it's different in Korea. And, and every country adapts your, let's say, home country culture to the current country that you're in. And you might grow up with a blend of that, but just assume that it's Korean culture. Right. And then when you go to Korea and it's just like pure Korean culture, you could be in for a shock. This is something that took me off guard a little bit when I was studying in Korea at university. Um, Korean fashion, Korean makeup, Korean haircuts, Korean styles. Mm. You love it. It's so wonderful. And especially if you uh, grew up in a country where a lot of people don't have your facial features or your skin color, and you're trying to, you know, copy what everyone else around you is wearing mm -hmm. or doing for their hair or their makeup. And it just looks bad on you. Yeah. Like for me, I struggled so much to do my eyeliner because of the way that my eye shape is. And learning from, you know, a lot of American YouTubers, let's say, it just never looked right on me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So I mm -hmm. always thought, oh, when I go to Korea and then I learn how to do Korean makeup, I'm going to be so gorgeous and it's going to look so great on me. And I, I would get Korean makeup done, of course, a lot because of, you know, model modeling and all of that. But I would look so different. I yeah. looked, I looked yeah. very Korean, right? With the Korean makeup style on me. And so it's kind of weird, like you're absorbed on this side or that side. And what quite <laughs> looks good on me, I, I still sometimes am not sure right. or going to a korean hairstylist because oh no one can do my hair well in the u.s so i'm gonna go to korean hairstylist and they can't do my hair either right oh that that is another thing yeah. i got my hair cut professionally one time in korea and that was because it was free and that was because <laughs> of you up. yeah yeah exactly well, and they're, so they're a great salon they did a good it was job. good it was good like someone like me uh with with my texture hair you know i don't trust just anyone to cut my hair i've had bad experiences before so i'm just used to going to black barber shops here in the states and so by the time i got to korea i was like you know what i'm not going to take the chance yeah. i'm just going to cut my own hair uh but yeah it, it it is something to consider especially like if you have maybe a certain style Mm -hmm. of clothing or a certain you know way you wear your makeup or hair like if it's a little different than Korea I mean I, I would say yeah definitely venture to like try to experiment and see what works for you mm -hmm. but uh, it, it may not all fit like a glove <laughs> basically right. so uh, just be just be uh, yeah. I guess aware of that yeah it's just like a diff it's different styles and just different faces and different hair than what you possess, mm -hmm. right? And so people might not know what to do with that. And you might also try to copy according to what's trendy and it could just look really bad on you, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> 
So here's a big one, dating and friendships, basically social relationships. Uh, a lot of people, including myself, sort of had the expectation of, I'm gonna move to Korea, I'm gonna just totally assimilate, which I did make an effort, um, and I did in some ways. And, you know, people are just gonna love me. No. They're just gonna accept me, like, oh, welcome home. Yeah. <laughs> welcome back to the motherland. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things where, I guess, developing relationships, even in your home country, I guess, depending on the culture and where you are, it's hard enough as it is. Now, imagine going to a completely different country where you didn't maybe grow up, you didn't develop those relationships since you were young. Mm -hmm. Like, that's gonna be even more challenging let alone there's a air, you know a language barrier there. So uh, I think uh, you know myself, I had to learn that I need to take the extra effort. So what I would do is in the beginning is like you know because I wanted to make like Korean friends, like Korean locals, and and really you know try to to speak Korean with them. And so I actually did the whole uh, language exchange app, and mm -hmm. I you know met actually two good friends, no you three know, good friends. You know, Kyuan is not language exchange. Right. The joke is that you do language exchange when you want to meet someone. Exactly. Date. Right. I think a lot of people are aware of that now, especially Koreans. But uh, yeah, so I actually did it because I wanted to connect with people. Sure. That was one way for me to connect with people. So uh, <laughs> what was that? Nothing. So uh, yeah, I so I you know started uh, connecting with a couple of people. We would hang out, grab dinner, and do a little bit of language exchange. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it took a lot of extra effort uh, on my part yeah. to, to do that. Yeah, it does take effort, obviously. Like you, because you're not going to learn about a person or a community or a group or a society just from base level like mm -hmm. it always the more you get to know them the more you realize like whoa we might have very different uh world views or way of viewing each other or, or where we fit into this society and korea is a very implicit society i mean mm -hmm. implicit culture and a lot of that is baked into the language and so if you're not privy to the to the implicit understanding um most people aren't going to go out of their way to just explain it to you right Right, so you you have to be willing to take on that additional burden of trying to understand, and, and you're kind of playing catch up too, because like you mentioned before, mm -hmm. especially in a, a country like Korea, a lot of these friendships are forged uh, at a younger age, because I think the hierarchy structure, you don't feel the burden of it so much. I think it's a lot more difficult to make friends later on in life, mm -hmm. as if we're everywhere, most likely, but especially in Korea, because you become more and more aware of the the difference in age right. or social standing right. and that dictates the way you can behave with each other mm -hmm. you know so you're not quite as free to just be friends with anyone yeah um so yeah so i think if you don't grow up in korea or you haven't been there from a young age or part of some community like international school right or a very westernized office space it can be difficult to break down those initial barriers absolutely to make friends yeah but don't let that scare you yeah it's you know look at it as a little bit of a challenge but it is very rewarding when you actually start to connect with different you know people uh you know friends and and a lot of times like if they're comfortable enough they might kind of bring you into their little circle they might invite you out for drinks uh which is another thing like it's, oh, it's yeah, a little drinking. bit easier to, to to go out you know for drinks that's or, a great or way a to make friends exactly yeah in korea yeah get them drunk and then you know it's just like yeah, and then you just <laughs> easier get more to do that yeah yeah but um uh we haven't really touched on dating i'll, I'll just oh, briefly yeah. say not that i have actual <laughs> experience uh, she was the first person that i dated <laughs> in korea but uh it, it wasn't Language easy for me it wasn't <laughs> No, it wasn't easy for me, but um, you know, some people they they have a pretty you know they might use the dating apps in Korea, um, but it is it is it might be another topic for another video, yeah. which is brush up on it. But um, you know, a lot of times in Korea, sometimes you'll find Koreans that uh, are open to dating people that may not be full Korean or like grown up in Korea, um, but. Sometimes, and I'm, this is not everybody. It's mm -hmm. just, uh, you know, just what I've noticed. Sometimes they'll only go so far. They might just date That's just to point. have fun. Yeah. But when it comes to serious relationships, sometimes they might be a little apprehensive, whether it's family mm -hmm. or they just want someone that's actually Korean, that yeah, understands yeah. them, the culture, that can speak the language. Yeah. Um, so oh, be, to be hop aware onto of that. that. Yeah. Because I didn't want to, anyway, to hop onto that. 
Also, this is something that I've been like, you'll, you'll hear it. I think in part of it is, is perpetuated by um, maybe even videos similar to the Happy Project where people's first mm -hmm. assumption is, oh, if you're mixed Korean, you're going to have a difficult life. Um, it's unfortunate that that negative stereotype can sometimes go out. And right. of course, it's rooted in reality. Mm -hmm. There's no denying that if you look historically, totally rooted in reality. And so you can't blame people for thinking that. Um, but it's, that's not necessarily the truth for everyone. So I think that is uh, maybe an unspoken stereotype that some Korean people might have. Sure. So they would have fun dating someone who's not Korean. They would enjoy being in a relationship and all of those things, and it's very possible. But when it comes to getting married and having kids and starting a family, that could be something that might come up. Some expectation you might have, because no doubt there are some of you who want to go to Korea to reconnect with family. Whether these are uh, relatives who did not emigrate to whichever country your immediate family is in, mm -hmm. whether you are reconnecting or hoping to reconnect with your birth parents, or whether you are mixed Korean and it's just your Korean parent has been a mystery to you for your whole life. And you thought, you know what, if I go to Korea, I'm going to get all the answers. Mm. I think um, it's a wonderful thing to go with such an open mind because you're diving into dangerous territory. Sure. It's, it, when it comes to family, it can always be really rocky. And I think sometimes you, you've only scratched the surface in a lot of these cases. And you just think like, well, because we're family, we're, we're gonna overcome those difficulties and it's, it's gonna be clear. Mm -hmm. And in the end, my birth parents or my mom or whatever is going to appreciate my efforts. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you might find uh, an you might get hurt or disappointed to know that even if you do put in a lot of effort, sometimes wounds just run too deep mm -hmm. for people to acknowledge or change, right? Yeah. So, you know, speaking from personal experience and also from many experiences of people who have shared with us, that uh, you can try and try and try and try. You can learn a language, you can live in the country, you can make friends, you can reconnect with family, mm -hmm. and it can be years that pass. And still in the end, you might not be accepted for all of those efforts. Mm -hmm. And that's something that um, you might just have to come to grips with somehow, or the relationship that you thought that was gonna happen didn't come into formation as you dreamt it would. But that's not to say your efforts are for nothing. It's extremely valuable to you personally and mm -hmm. who you are and establishing your identity and just figuring out your place in the world and where your relationship does stand with those who do want to reconnect with you. And I think that uh, none of it is, is for waste. If you're done with a genuine interest in love and you really just want to learn about yourself and you want to learn about your family, even if it's not reciprocated, perhaps, um, I don't think it's for waste at all. And you'll be able to stand a lot more firmly in who you are. Okay, well, hopefully you enjoyed that conversation that you know we had about our expectations and you know potentially your expectations of moving to Korea. Uh, just to give you a heads up, we actually did a longer form podcast where we dove a little bit deeper into a lot of the points that we discussed. And we also mentioned some uh, other ones as well. So definitely check that out wherever you get your podcasts. And the other thing is we have the website that is now live. It's constantly growing and constantly evolving. We're uploading lots of photos, portraits, some videos that we have done, and lots of stories. There's writings, personal blog. You can really get that personal insight of what it's like living in Korea. So hopefully you check that out. It's thehappyproject.com. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. We love that all of you guys are here and we hope that these videos have been useful to you. Um, okay, that's it for now. I guess we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. We are The Happy Project.